hello everyone uh, those who have joined welcome to today's session uh, today we will be discussing about spring cloud gcp and uh, google cloud storage uh, firstly uh, am, uh, am i audible or my voice is clear uh, everybody can hear me yes yes okay thank you for confirming uh, so first uh, as usual let's first uh, go through the knowledge etiquettes um punctuality join the session five minutes prior if possible uh, we start on time and conclude on time uh, feedback please make sure to submit a constructive feedback for all sessions as it is very helpful for the presenter silent mode keep your mobile devices in silent mode Feel free to move out of the session in case you have an urgent call and need to attend it. Avoid disturbance, avoid unwanted chit chat during the session and just concentrate. Um, so uh, moving on uh, to the agenda for today's session. First, uh, we will recap a bit on Spring Cloud GCP as we have already done many sessions on this topic. Still, if anybody is new or like uh, we, we it, it's a good opportunity to rejog our memory on Spring Cloud GCP. Next, we will go through what uh, GCS is, that is Google Cloud Storage and uh, some of its use cases. Lastly, we will try to connect to GCS from Spring Boot application using this uh, Spring Cloud GCP project um so let's start with uh, our first topic of the day that is spring cloud gcp now firstly everything that i'm discussing here today is with respect to java so all implementations of these libraries present in uh, spring cloud gcp are in java so um moving on point number one spring cloud gcp is a project offered by collaboration of spring uh, that is uh, designed by pivotal and gcp means google cloud platform uh, that is designed by google uh, this uh, now please uh, note here uh, spring cloud gcp is a project it is not one library but a collection of libraries so each of the gcp services have uh, a different library for uh, that service to access that service and uh, use that service uh, from our Spring Boot application. So each of them are uh, are separate libraries contained in the Spring Cloud GCP project. So Spring Cloud GCP is a project that offers a wide collection of libraries that lets us access and use most of the services offered by gcp directly from our spring boot application so here i mentioned most of the services not all because uh, like the list of services is ever changing and many services are introduced uh, or changed uh, so but you you have access to most of the services uh, using this spring cloud gcp project uh, along with proper documentation for each of the service. Now, uh, I have linked in this slide uh, the Spring Cloud GCP uh, page. Uh, this is the page, Spring IO Projects, uh, Spring Cloud GCP uh, official page. It, it provides the full list of features or services, GCP services that it provides and the documentation uh, on how to get started with uh, each of them uh, whichever one you want to work with uh, so in this page you can access all of them you can also find the source code uh, directly in github for uh, all the uh, gcp uh, services uh, uh, spring boot services designed using spring cloud gcp uh, this is the github link uh, github.com google cloud platform and under it spring cloud gcp um, the the repository also contains code samples for you uh, 
so that you can it help it can help you develop your application uh, while you are working it in uh, using one or any of these uh, gcp services so it has basic to uh, like very specific use cases uh, all of the examples you can find in their github repository uh, so this is the link for uh, G uh, for uh, GCS uh, examples, and uh, you can also find every other services uh, from uh, this link. Um, and to take a live training session on Spring Cloud GCP, please visit the uh, Google Code Labs. Uh, he here you can practice uh, specific use cases for GCP and uh, how to. Um, develop solutions of uh, specific use cases uh, using the uh, this spring cloud gcp uh, libraries that are present uh, for each of the service uh, spring cloud gcp provides utilities to work with google cloud storage so this is one specific service by gcp uh, which is an object storage service for storing and retrieving large amounts of unstructured data so we will uh, we will uh, discuss on Google Cloud Storage further on uh, in the upcoming slide. Um, so uh, first, uh, to understand it further, we would need to first understand um, what uh, unstructured data is. So Google Cloud Storage is a storage service, object storage service that basically stores unstructured data so firstly let's see uh, what unstructured data is um, before that anybody would like to contribute like what is unstructured data Let me repeat my question was, what is unstructured data? Uh, is anybody uh, like able to contribute on this? No problem, I'll uh, start explaining in this next slide. Um, so what is unstructured data? Um, it is the data that, uh, that like you can understand from its name only uh, that does not have a specific form or predefined data model for example uh, structured data is like something that fits into a structure like tables or uh, rows uh, which have uh, fields that contain uh, data in a structured format basically more easier uh, example would be like uh, text or image or video these are specific formats of data so uh, you can uh, only for example if i say image you will always expect an image to show up you will not expect a uh, text to show up there in place of an image or in video you would not e uh, expect it uh, to be a still still image or a text video will always have uh, multiple frames uh, moving very fast so that that is a specific uh, that are specific formats of data but unstructured data would be something like a mixture of all of the above mentioned data formats so uh, it won't have a one specific format rather it is uh, devoid of any format that is why this type of data is called unstructured. Uh, was I able to uh, describe what unstructured data is? Yeah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, you will all like this was mostly definition uh, uh, as simple as I could uh, explain. Uh, also, I will give some examples. So you might ask, like, uh, where is this strange type of data used? Or like, why would we even use cloud storage? 
to store like this unstructured data uh, that we might not know of even so uh, to that like i would say that there are numerous number of use cases and this is not really unknown to us and we use unstructured data in our day to day life like for example uh, unstructured data is like uh, there are yeah so uh, there are these are the examples like social media posts and comments uh, email and chat conversations uh, sensor data from iot devices uh, uh, text from documents articles research papers so these do not contain one specific uh, format of data uh, rather they can have multiple types of formats of data stored in a uh, specific in uh, in one place as an object storage uh, so uh, there are also log files generated by applications and systems so we can simply store these these data uh, into google cloud uh, object storage uh, in a unstructured format so uh, so uh, that is the uh, like application of uh, google cloud storage um, so basically uh, if i give you an example from right here so log files are generated by applications and systems and uh, many a times uh, these logs are uh, further used for uh, data analytics purposes wherein you can store these logs uh, in your uh, gcs bucket and then uh, further use those in some other uh, like data processing pipeline and uh, get some uh, uh, actual purpose out of the logs um, process those data and uh, like have some specific use cases uh, data engineering use case uh, for these logs so that 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 is uh, very essential nowadays and uh, that is the uh, biggest uh, use case i might say uh, for uh, this specific uh, uh, type of data and uh, uh, google cloud storage um, so uh, coming to why GCS. So, uh, firstly, uh, Google Cloud Storage is a highly scalable, durable, and cost effective object storage service provided by GCP, that is Google Cloud Platform. It allows you to store and manage large amount of unstructured data. So we already uh, discussed what unstructured data is and uh, GCP provides uh, highly scalable and uh, cost effective object storage service uh, that is that can be used to store this unstructured data. Google Cloud Storage provides high performance as well as reliable storage which can be used for wide range of use cases such as storing data backups or serving content for websites and applications. So these are some more use cases uh, for which Google Cloud Storage is used. Uh, so uh, so uh, these are some more use cases. And uh, moving on to the next part, uh, Google Cloud Storage operates on the concept of object storage. So I've been mentioning this term. Uh, let me explain that now. Uh, what is object storage? Uh, it means that each object uh, is a unit of data that is uh, that consists of the actual content. So you have the content and it is stored in an object. Uh, so the object consists of the actual content it will have a unique identifier that is the object's name and uh, the uh, it, it can also contain uh, the metadata for the uh, that specific object for example its creation time or uh, something uh, related anything related to its metadata uh, that can be further used for uh, some purpose uh, one of his example I will show you in the demo. 
so Google Cloud Storage uh, offers different uh, storage classes for various use cases and uh, cost requirements. So you might have various uh, kind of use cases for storing your data, or you might have a specific budget uh, for uh, for using this service. So for all those purposes, uh, Google Cloud Storage offers different storage classes which are uh, applicable for uh, different uh, uh, use cases and cost requirements. So these uh, classes are standard, nearline, cold line, and archive, uh, each with uh, varying levels of access speed and cost. So if you increase the cost, access speed would be more. And uh, if you decrease the cost, then access, access speed will be lesser. So based on that, these uh, different types are uh, uh, designed in Google Cloud Storage uh, so that you can use for uh, each requirement. Um, for uh, for those of you who are not aware of these types, like let me just uh, go in brief, like what these means. Standard is like the uh, default storage class for Google Cloud Storage. Uh, it basically offers high performance, that is the property of Google Cloud Storage, and uh, low latency for frequently accessed data, like uh, the data that that is used actively for any uh, purpose. So, for example, serving content for website and applications that I mentioned earlier. So, this is an active purpose. So, you can use the standard storage for this purpose. So uh, it needs to be always active and frequently accessed. Uh, also like for logs and any type of application data. So uh, that is standard and near line is, uh, is uh, designed for uh, those type of data, like those that are accessed uh, less frequently, less than standard storage. So uh, it is accessed, but uh, it it uh, it is for those data that are accessed not so much, like not actively. So uh, property of this type of storage is it uh, it uh, uh, provides fast access when needed, but uh, it it lowers the storage costs as compared to standard storage. So, which makes it a good choice for backing up an arch archival data that is accessed like um, infrequently, um, basically not actively. So, th that is near line. Cold line is uh, intended for long term uh, archival data that is like uh, uh, rarely you would access it. Uh, so, it, it further reduces the costs. Uh, then uh, like it, it is cheaper than standard as well as near line. Uh, but, uh, but the disadvantage here would be uh, the longer uh, read time. So uh, it would pro uh, provide longer uh, read time uh, due to which uh, it, it won't be uh, like suited for the other two use cases that I mentioned for standard and near line. Uh, so it is only used for backup data that is rarely used. So um, yeah, so it might be used for uh, like the data compliance, uh, data retention and compliance uh, so that uh, you won't have to access it uh, very frequently, but you need to store it. And archive storage is uh, the most cost effective one. Uh, here you archive the data, means you store the data and very rarely access it. Like its sole purpose is to store the data, not accessing it. You might access it, but it, it will have the longest retrieval time among uh, all the other classes. Uh, so you will be able to access it, but uh, the focus is not on accessing the data rather than storing the data. So uh, that would also reduce the cost just drastically for your storage. Um, so 
that's the explanation for these uh, uh, storage classes coming back to gcs um, google cloud storage uh, provides a variety of ways to access and interact with your data this includes a web based console so web based console is uh, the gcp console that we access from uh, the from the uh, like url uh, gcp uh, platform so i will sh uh, show you all of the ones i'm mentioning here uh, so okay let me show you right now uh, i believe i have it open so this is the google cloud platform uh, you can access your project your uh, services that uh, google cloud offers you can search for any service from here compute engine bigquery im cloud storage so <clears throat> you can uh, so this is called the google cloud platform so basically from here you can access your specific service uh, that you want so this cloud storage is open right now uh, moving back um, moving back so next is uh, where was i Open control okay restful apis for programmatic access so uh, this we will also discuss uh, at the end of the session uh, we can access uh, th this is basically the spring cloud gcp format uh, sorry way to access the uh, google cloud services so you can uh, create rest apis for uh, um, each of the uh, service we will take an example for gcs a uh, few uh, few moments later uh, and show you how you can do this uh, command line tools command line tools is basically uh, the command line way form to access uh, the services so using the command uh, commands uh, you can ac uh, access any of the services provided by google and sdk for various programming languages so you have to install a uh, sdk uh, in your system uh, google cloud sdk to basically access the command line tools and uh, use the uh, google uh, cloud platform libraries uh, in your uh, spring boot applications uh, command line tools can be directly uh, accessed from google cloud shell uh, you can directly put any command in here uh, it will work it has all the uh, all the services pre-installed here but if you want to access it from here in your uh, id then you have to uh, install it in your system then you will be able to access any of the uh, command line uh, commands um, to access the uh, gcp services so that's that and next is google cloud storage provides fine grained access controls and permissions to secure your data you can control who has read and write access to your buckets and objects using uh, google cloud iam so google cloud iam is also a service that can control access uh, and revoke access uh, or give access to any of the services i hope nothing uh, okay so you can give access to any of the uh, principles principles would be uh, a service account or a group uh, or a specific person for example this is my email id and i am the owner of this project i have way too much permissions so uh, so this this is where you control access to uh, specific uh, permissions so you can always go and edit uh, edit a principle to uh, give uh, them uh, permission for a specific service or revoke access to a specific service so that's iam uh, so this is not only for google cloud storage it is applicable to any any of the 
uh, GCP services. Now, data stored in Google Cloud Storage is distributed across uh, multiple geographic regions to ensure high durability and availability. This means that your data is replicated along, uh, across uh, multiple data centers, reducing the risk of data loss due to hardware failures in one specific region or maybe any other issues in that region, uh, which can cause that region to be uh, offline. So basically this is the multi region uh, feature, but this is not always available if if you uh, create a storage that is uh, that has a specific single region. Uh, so you will you can only access data from that specific region if your uh, storage is multi region, then uh, you can take advantage of this feature. Uh, Google Cloud Cloud Storage uh, is uh, designed to scale seamlessly as your data storage needs to grow. It can handle massive amounts of data and can automatically scale to accommodate increased storage demands without manual intervention. So uh, when you keep uh, storing uh, more and more data, it can basically automatically scale and store huge amounts of data without any manual intervention, which makes it ideal uh, and very reliable storage object storage option for any type of unstructured data. Now uh, we'll be moving on to a Spring Boot application. Uh, now I will uh, in this slide I will explain you uh, how you can create a basic Spring Boot project and basically uh, perform read write operations uh, and connect with your GCS account. Uh, all of those I will explain uh, uh, like right from the beginning. Uh, if you are a beginner by any means. Um, I will explain all these steps in detail uh, as well and show you on GCP console. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have a active free tier account right now. So I can't provide you a working example and uh, like show you it happening in real time. Uh, hence, I will also show you a POC application uh, that we designed um, after I explain this basic one. Um, so, like, let's go to the uh, setup here. Uh, the first step is set up your Google Cloud project and enable GCS API. So, uh, first step would be create an account on Google Cloud Console and uh, and. Uh, provide your uh, like uh, pay, preferred payment method in billing accounts. And uh, so you will be prompted to do this automatically. Uh, you won't have to search it and go here. I'm just showing you for demonstration purpose. Uh, once you have enabled your billing account, you can access any of the uh, services present here and enable any of the API present here. So the next step is enabling uh, the Google Cloud Storage API. So you basically come to this page. So you can just simply search Cloud Storage in this search box and you will found, find uh, Cloud Storage uh, in your search result. And when you go to this, you will be uh, you will you will not have this page first time. You will be prompted to enable the API like this enable billing. You will have enable API here. And uh, in that you can uh, enable the API, then you will be greeted with this page uh, where you can create buckets from here and uh, like upload something, upload some data into it after going into the bucket. So buckets will be displayed right here. Uh, name would be the buckets bucket ID, which is unique to uh, the all of the users in GCP. So you have to choose a unique name which will not match uh, anyone else's. Uh, so and the uh, project, uh, so you will have to create a project with a name. Uh, it can have any name. So as you see, these two projects have same name, but they will have a different ID automatically created. So that is how they differentiate each other. Um, so you will always have to use the ID to access the project. Um, 
moving on uh step, step two is uh, google cloud sdk and authentication i'll move a bit faster amount of time um so uh, this this uh, link is for uh, getting the sdk uh, if i go to i think uh, yeah this is the link so you can um, like install your specific uh, uh, package to install from uh, uh, the google cloud sdk for using uh, so there are the detailed step mentioned here i'm not going into that um, using this you can basically access any of the google cloud services as i mentioned earlier uh, you can use this uh, these commands to log in directly from your uh, uh, terminal uh, as i as you can see i did here you will be you will be automatically redirected to the browser uh, or uh, you can click here to get redirected uh, after that you will have to log in using your uh, gcp account and then you will uh, you will be logged in here you can access all the uh, services here next you have to execute this command to set your specific project uh, this will not work here because i have a different account setup so yeah you you will have to gcloud config set project and your specific project id that you created next uh, create a spring boot project uh, so you can use any of the tools spring initializer or your id to create the spring boot project and uh, while while in initializer you can take these two dependencies uh, spring cloud gcp starter and google cloud storage otherwise you can add it manually uh, from uh, maven uh, central or like from here if you uh, if you can get this slide from uh, nastic uh, website um, next is uh, step 5 step 5 is to create a java service class uh, that will handle reading and writing data from google cloud storage and uh, and a uh, rest controller that will use this uh, service class so let me briefly explain the service class it is very small uh, it's not that complicated uh, gcs service and uh, it will use the gcs bucket name value from uh, application properties so you have to create a application properties uh, uh, file in which you can just mention the bucket name uh, and that will be used here uh next uh, you will create a storage class which will basically access the google cloud storage service from uh, the google sdk so storage options get default instance get get service this is the way to access the uh, google cloud uh, storage service the storage options is for gcs and uh, every other service has its different uh, service class um so in storage we have the google cloud storage uh, configured uh, so here we are using get default instance it is basically getting the default configuration for your storage uh, we may have a different type of uh, like uh, configuration that i will show you in the demo i am running out of time um write data to gcs function is basically writing the data so you will create a bucket object uh, in which we can uh, use the storage object we created earlier that contains the gcs service and uh, use the get method and the bucket name to get that bucket contents in our bucket object now we get bucket uh, now using that bucket we create a file name uh, which we are getting uh, input in this uh, in this method and uh, data uh, is the data that will be contained in uh, that uh, uh, object so that that is the writing part and uh, and uh, this is the reading part that is uh, mentioned already here read data from gcs storage dot get bucket name and it will return the contents of the bucket uh, so we also create a controller class which will basically implement this service uh by exposing two endpoints one is post that is right uh, that will post the data to uh, google cloud service and write that uh, data uh, this is the object name the unique identifier that i mentioned earlier and data is the data 
uh, main data that is uh, contained inside the object. Read will basically read that uh, read that from a bucket and uh, like uh, provide you return uh, from this endpoint. So you can test this endpoint uh, using uh, Postman uh, first run your application and test using the endpoints. If, if you uh, you must have done it earlier, so your URL will be localhost 8080, GCS write, GCS read. Uh, you can post the uh, post the data from here and uh, read the data using this endpoint. So quickly, I'll show you a demo also. Uh, and again, it's not a working demo. I don't have the free tier class, uh, free tier uh, GCP account. Uh, I'll just show you uh, a more unique version of that. Um, so uh, what we are doing here is uh, like uh, we have a Google Cloud Storage bucket and uh, we have in that bucket uh, many folders which have uh, which have folders uh, like uh, folders with uh, names uh, by its creation date. So uh, it will have a path and then its creation date and uh, they are arranged in that format. So this is an unstructured uh, data storage and we can structure uh, somewhat structure the data using the uh, path name. So we use the creation time of the uh, data uh, to uh, structure the data and uh, like uh, filter it uh, like somehow from uh, Google Cloud Storage. So basically we access the uh, storage uh, in the, uh, like we create a client firstly, and this time we set credentials. We have a, a service account key using which we access the uh, storage service and then pro project ID and then build get service. So th this will act access this specific service using the service account key, you can't directly access it. So uh, there is some security built in here and then uh, we will uh, list, uh, we will take a list and uh, we will store the uh, blobs. Blobs are the uh, anything that is in the bucket. So files, folders, whatever there is, uh, they are known as blobs. So uh, you can, uh, I'm taking all the blobs present in that bucket uh, and uh, filtering by folder path. So folder path is the path of the uh, specific folder uh, in which I want to go directly. I don't want to access any other uh, folders. I want to go into this folder directly. I'm mentioning the folder path. So I'm calling this function using the project ID, the bucket name, and the folder path. Uh, and uh, then uh, I basically have a start date and end date. Uh, I am filtering. Uh, Firstly, I extract the uh, date uh, string from the uh, whole path. So this is uh, unique to me. You don't need to worry about this. Uh, so I am extracting the date from the uh, whole path and uh, I am checking if uh, it start. It, it is the start date or end date or something in between. So if something in between or start date or end date, I am adding that to filter dates uh filter dates list and then uh, i am for further using this uh, output in uh, some other use cases so i was using it in a pipeline to create uh, uh, to get some uh, more uh, use cases out of this um, so this is a unique use case for google cloud storage uh, so that that is basically the everything that you might need to know for uh, like accessing data in uh, GCS. You might uh, like go through uh, these specific uh, uh, methods to uh, access the uh, access the uh, blobs present in uh, the buckets um, and tinker with it a bit so that you you know what uh, what is used in which case so um, so basically for example blog.getName is getting the blob id 
for that uh, a specific block uh, and uh, then prefix is getting a spec getting to a specific path current directory has also a different way of listing the blocks so you can also get the documentation here um yeah so that's mostly it uh, uh, for the spring cloud gcp google cloud storage uh i hope i completed yeah i hope yeah i completed the, the time mentioned and if anybody has uh, anything to ask please do ask away before we finish up okay if anybody has anything to ask if not we can conclude this session um all the resources you will be able to get from go one percent um and i hope you got to uh, learn slash recapitulate um anything uh, that we discussed in this slide uh, have a good day everyone Thank you for joining. Thanks a lot.